boom, I'm back guys, how are we doing? I am feeling really good today. I'm on the old river. Right, last time I actually got it wrong, I told you it was 40, up to 14 feet, I was completely wrong. It's only like seven to like eight feet, I think, and in some places it's four feet. But it's still a deep old, uh, a deep old river. And uh, like I say, it's an old river, it's been cut off either side, so um, it's not illegal what I'm doing. Um, I wasn't gonna say, I've got a PVA bag set up. I want to say big thanks to everybody who's liked to subscribe to my channel. I only realised how many subscribers I've got till the other day. I actually looked and properly looked and I was like, Jesus Christ, I had like 80 or 90, I'm like three, three and a half thousand now. So that's insane. I honestly do appreciate it, guys. It's nuts. If I would have started this channel knowing that, I would have started it a long time ago. <laughs> it's one of those things, isn't it, eh? Boydy scam guy came through, didn't he? <laughs> All right, anyway, I'm gonna get the rods out. It's lush today. It's, I don't think, you know, I think I'm gonna catch, I always think I'm gonna catch, but you know, it's hit and miss today. It's, it's a big old place, it's an old sketchy river. Um, but uh, I can't say too much like I did in the last video. I said to you, I said to everybody, I left my baiting needle, didn't I? Hey, look what I found. When you fish, wherever people don't fish, you will find the stuff that you leave. So uh, I was quite surprised by that. I literally walked onto the bank, and this is a massive field, and I seen where it was to, because I knew where it was to. Um, so yeah, um, when you go on these old little places, if you leave stuff, it's only there. That's what I say about rubbish, don't bloody leave it. Um, but yes, so I've seen carp here. They weren't colossal, um, but I have seen one. So I'm gonna cast out to where, I was fishing in the same spot as I did last time, but slightly different. Um, and I got a sli slightly heavier PVA bag today. Proper going hard today. Um, obviously pop-ups, standard. Um, and this time I've got porridge, porridge inside the PVA bags for two reasons. One, it floats so I can see if the actual bag disperses properly. And two is, I don't have enough else to put in it. I ain't put boilies in there. So I've got pellet and porridge. <laughs> Trust me, if the carp are here, they'll be fine. Right, so I'm going to get this rod out. I'll show you the contraption. It's basically the same set I was using for the wild carp. Honestly, guys, you can see what's going on here. Right, back on it. <laughs> right, so there we go. Look at it. And that's obviously the lead shot where my pop-up's gonna be. My pop-up is just in that bag. It looks horrendous. I'm gonna tidy it up a little bit. I'm casting like five rod lengths, so I'm not particularly bothered about how the rod is sat, if that makes sense. As long as it all stays in there. When I cast out, I don't care, basically. You said I'm not fishing it that far. thing is guys I would show you how I'm where I'm fishing but you know what people are like you know what people are like so I'm not gonna show exactly where I'm fishing because if I catch a fish I will well no I won't <laughs> I don't want no one seeing where I fish um, even though it's part of parcel you know right next rod boom 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 look at that PVA bag <laughs> fair brass eat your heart out stuff in it you know Right, so I'm going to get this out there and then I'm going to move the camera around, show you where I'm fishing. Jeez. All right then guys, here we are. I'm on the bank. Sorry if on my last video I was whispering. It's because like I said, when you're fishing for wild carp, they are so spooky. I'm going to give you a little example of what I'm all about. Remember what I was saying the other day um, on the low pressure video, like if fish know they're being fished for, it can be a nightmare. Well, wild carp, that is more. You know, like, I guarantee you, when I was here the other day, along the bank, got to here where it's a bit of bush. And as I walked around the bush, carp see me and just bolt it off. And I was having a rod in my hand, just see me. And that was it. On this bank, so if you look behind me, they're all clear. So as soon as they see something on the bank, normally it's a predator. It's a heron or human, you know, they're not stupid, they learn by association and it bolted off when it's EV. And uh, it was only about 12 pound. I was like, Jesus Christ, you just dumped one. Like, so if I was just that carp now, that carp would know I'm here, if that makes sense. And he would doubt he would pick up my baits. So like, I know a lot of people will fish this place and a lot of the fish have been caught at night. And it's for that reason, because they're so funny. 
Um, this is why I'm crouching like this, because I don't want to be, because uh, they're going to see me. I, I've been like doing that. You know, that's literally like, when you've got to imagine these banks are clear all the time. The only time there's, there's, there's a, like a something on the horizon is when it's fish. That's why I try and keep down low as I can, uh, keep out the way. And uh, I keep my rods low, keep myself low, and just keep yourself out of presence. If you jump up and down the bank, like I know people used to come down here like in groups and get pissed and just all cast out, and I couldn't think of anything worse than fish. No, you really didn't, you're not going to catch anything, you know. Um, but like, I guarantee you, if I didn't know that carp was here and I was fishing the other side and I put some bait out, I guarantee I could have got one off him if he didn't know I was here, you know, because he wouldn't know. He would just come in, grab the bait, shut away, pam, hooked up, woo, fish on, you know. So, um, yeah, so like I said, this is a hard little place. And uh, I could have went to the lake where I catch all the fish all the time, but no, I want to, I want to struggle, I want to catch a wild fish. And uh, like I say, sometimes I literally like, you know, I'm losing what I would, you know, if I was posting a lot of videos, that would be a loss of videos. But you know, you've got, if you want to catch decent fish, that's what you've got to do in it, you know. And um, oh yeah, one of the other things was when I was going on about 15 hours of blanking. I meant, was actually meant to say, that's three years, but 15 hours, that one for, for over a couple of sessions this season. That's three years I fished that lake, trust me. So that's why I was so happy when I had that car. When like, I just turned up after a couple of sessions and just gone, oh, I've got it. I worked that place out if you watched the tench video ages ago. I've, I've, you know, I worked out where the mud weed is, where it is, and blah, 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 blah. Um, so yeah, and in a couple of, I'd probably give it a month, that, that lake wouldn't be fishable, barely fishable, trust me. You'd only be able to fish in weed pockets, and I won't want to hook into that carp again in that weed bed when it's like that, because you're just going to lose it. You're going to have to have, uh, you know, drop off leads, everything. Like, you have to be proper switched on to land them in there. It's not like, it's harder than linear, put it that way. When, it, when that weed's in there, there's trolleys in there, there's baskets in there. You wouldn't imagine what's in there. I did a little video, but I ended up deleting it by accident of it, um, just how bad it is in there. It's horrendous, honestly. There's trees everywhere. I was surprised I even landed that carp. Um, like I said, I've hooked it to one before and it's been snap on me, like, you know? So there's so much crap in there. You just don't know what you're fishing over or stuff like that. Anyway, rub it on. But yeah, look at this, eh? I'll give you a little view. Look at the rolling hills behind me, eh? Look at the rolling hills. Can't beat it. And you know my little local lake that I fish be around today, you know? But you see, look at this. It's just a little bush in one about. It's like one bush here along this track, along this track bit here. So uh, I seen a carp on the other side of it last time I came here. That's why I'm here. I'm not stupid. I fish where I see the carp. Um, but it's just a, if you see how big it is, yeah, it's about four fields long. Um, so yeah, it could be miles from the fish. They could be at the other end, off the wind, chilling. But I've seen fish down here, and I know there's lilies down there. Loads of lily beds. Um, and uh, they're getting ready for smalling soon. So there's no doubt the fishing can be too far away from that area. That's, that's what I think, in a way. But you just don't know, do you? Right, anyway, guys, I'm about to trek on. Um, yeah, and I do appreciate everybody, honestly. Um, I do, obviously, if you've seen as well, I try to comment and uh, reply to people. And if you want me things to do or ask me to do things, I will do them. And I will be doing a video in the next couple of weeks, or the next couple of days, probably, um, to do with my rigs, helicopter rigs, how I fish for wild carp, and just general setups with bat leads and that. Some people are still a little bit confused. Um, and it's, if you don't understand it, that's something you've never seen it, you don't really get it. Fucking corner, linear, spotted. Danny Fairbrass does my tits in. Does my tits in. <laughs> That's what people think I'm like. I mean, I'm sat here behind the rods just going, rah, rah, rah. and guys like, you need to chill out on the bank. It's like, mate, what do you think I'm fishing for five, six hours? I'm doing just sat behind the camera, just ranting, like, rah, rah. I need to vent, vent, vent. <laughs> now I just vent after about eight hours of quietness. Um, like now, it's like quiet. Just been sat there for about two hours doing nothing. Looking at the rods, <laughs> it was so weird. They think I'm like swinging on the bank. <laughs> I'm sat there for three hours doing nothing, you know. So, uh, yeah, people are funny. I think guess what people think I'm like. I'm just sat again, <sighs> spotted, disgusting, raps. <laughs> you know, it's so funny. I'm just sat here chilling. Like, it's, like, it's a lush day, got the rolling hills, you know. It's lovely, isn't it? Like, you know, it's what I'm generally doing a lot of the time, just quiet. And uh, the other thing I was going to tell about was, um, like, when I seen that fish, when it was raining and that, that, that was definitely the fish that I caught what I seen. Um, um, you want to make sure, and, like, when you see a fish or something like that, that you put the bait out, uh, sorry, you only put out a little bit of bait. You don't want to be 
turn half a tin of corn out and then cast it out on a, on a fish what was ready there feeding it's low pressure it's raining so that's why i just chucked out a little pva bag and that was it and a pop-up that was it i didn't go anything crazy and the other reason why i don't i tied my bags if you notice today with the actual hook link in it um the reason why for that is i don't mind how long it takes to uh, break down when i'm casting a fish or on quick vibes i just nip it purpose because if the bag takes ages to break down my hook's only just nicked so that's going to break off really quickly. It's going to ask me one of the first things to break off. If um, my hook link's in there and it takes, I don't know, because it's freezing cold, 10 minutes, or I'd say five minutes, right, to break down. That's five minutes that I'm not going to be getting a run, isn't it? And if you watched it the other day, I cast it out and literally put the rod down and it went. It wouldn't, that wouldn't have happened if I had a PV bag all over it. So that's, you know, that's the reason why I don't put my hook link in the PVA app. I have today, because like I just said, and if I'm fishing in deep, deep weed, I will. Um, but if, generally, if I know I can present a bait, just a little PVA bag, and I just nook it on the side, cast out, beat bait, wash. Right, there you go, a little tip for you. Right, hopefully you see me next one, picking fish. Right, ciao, ciao. Right, so uh, I'll explain why. You notice on this venue, and on the one I call the Wild Cup, I changed swims. Because I found, right, when you fish a certain swim, in old places where the carp lived there for a long time, sometimes the carp will never visit your spot. And if they do, it's only certain times a year. It's like this river. I noticed that, uh, like, I was fishing down there, right? But I noticed some fish down this way, right? If there's an otter down that way, because there is otters in this river, in this like weird stretch of river, um, they might not ever come down here, the carp. They might just stay at that end because of the otter or what, vice versa, whatever, right? There's certain things what carp do, and um, there's certain areas, like, I'm not too sure about this river, because I ain't, I ain't fished it enough to know yet, but I know, specifically wild lakes, like certain carp get caught in certain areas for a reason because they like patrol in certain areas they're like territorial territorial to a certain extent and um they definitely stay in the same areas and when i was watching this wild carp in the summer last year i noticed they never came my swim um and i was like i'm pre-baited just because i pre-baited and i've raked it all they're in a weeded area why would they want to come out of a safer weedy area where they've been living for like 15 years so you've got some time and you can draw them out because i have but i you know if you can fish where the fish are, if that makes sense, you're definitely gonna catch more fish. Um, and I've noticed when I was watching them last summer, they didn't really go near my swim. So I moved swim last time when I'd done that fishing session. Well, I didn't actually move, I just checked it out and I seen a carp. So, oh, I cast them out here. But it's just like a point, proves the point one part. I've never seen a carp in my swim yet. Not that big anyway. I've caught a little common, like I said, and that's it. Um, because I generally think any tension, little, the little carp come through that area for some reason, whatever reason it is. But carp, definitely when there's only like five or six of them in a the lake or in a place like this, when it's probably, I'd say, I'd, I'd say a guess, right? I'd say, because honestly, I haven't got a clue. I don't think anyone knows what's in here. Right, let's just say there's 20 carp in here, okay? Right, 15 of them could live literally halfway across this river, just stay at this one end. And then the other five can stay at that end. So I might not ever catch the big ones, if that makes sense. If the five big ones live at the other end and they don't always travel up and down, then screw it. I would imagine in this place they do go up and down. But I reckon at certain times of year they go, they stay in certain areas, definitely, for spawning and feeding. And at this end, there's a lot of tadpoles and weed and lilies. So that's just what my thinking was. I thought, well, that's what they're going to be feeding on. The wild carp, they're going to be feeding on tadpoles, bug life, the weed, everything, all the crap. Um, and there was there was a big big uh, I know a thirty pound grass carp in it, but I know it's dead now. But um, there was a thirty pound grass carp in it, um, so it shows the fish can get big in it, like you know. And the other thing, like, you know, as I keep looking down, looking down the river, is because when you look down a river like this, and you you can keep your eyes on it for a good half hour, to it, you see stuff, you know, you see fish rolling and everything else. First of all, they, uh, like the surface go flat, and sometimes you can see a back, and and even at that old lake, I'm not joking. That if you see that carp's dorsal, I've seen that swimming around like a shark with the dorsal out. And that is when you know they're not being fished for. That is like he was proper just chilling, and he didn't know I was there. I was hiding, and uh, he had a dorsal out. There's another carp with him, and he was just swimming around with his dorsal out like a shark. It looked nuts, but um. Yeah, when they're not being fished, it's like here now, like if I just seen a fish and just cast it at it with a three ounce lead, I pretty much think I'd scare it off. So you've got to be really sneaky, drop it in, boom, hope the fish come over it. You don't want me, you know, cast it at them as much. Um, anyway, and oh yeah, and when I did cast at that carp, that took about 40 minutes before I actually got a bite. Um, and I reeled in once because I didn't like the hook bait presentation and I was right, it was in weed. So I recasted it with another PVA bag and that's when I got the run. Um, so yeah, presentation, like I said, is key, and sometimes it is pure luck, like you've got your peak present, presented, trust me, sometimes you even think, how do I get right, you know, but that's just, 
competition for you, isn't it? And that's why if you have two rods um, or three rods or whatever, you know what I'm saying, you can double that chance, triple that chance. Video um, doing that it. Um, the challenges are uh, the fox one I seen, and it was nine hundred pound to start carp fishing and go out and catch a carp and buy your bait and his rods and nine hundred quid. That's worth in all my equipment combined and that's my sea fishing equipment river fishing and carp fishing um so yeah it's bizarre to me and the, the things that he spent money on were the things that i don't even would never spend money on like it's crazy on sleeping bags and everything to me that's that's pussy man sleeping bag what are you talking about i sleep in my anulkin mat his bed chair was worth more than all my equipment virtually it was like that's not like mate you should have went with done like at least made it fairly realistic like 300 quid or something 400 pound but 900 pound like even the people i know with quite a bit of money wouldn't go and do that on carp equipment like over time you build it up but a grand that's a lot of money man and like yeah obviously went and caught some fish and it was it wasn't a good challenge in my opinion it was ridiculous they should have gave him like realistically three four hundred pound so i thought i might do it depends if people want me to do it or not otherwise i wouldn't even bother but i thought i might I'd just do it with a hundred quid if i do it with a hundred pound and buy my rod my alarms um uh maybe a shit a, a rubbish bivy um and my end tackle and my bait for 100 quid i guarantee i'll do it i bet you'll nail a load of fish on it you know i don't even wouldn't even need two rods man i only need one rod to that. <laughs> but yeah it was it was really weird i was watching it i was like that's not a challenge 900 pound i was like that's nuts that's more than what i spend in a year or something like that's crazy um so yeah i thought i might do it 100 quid um, I was obviously get out of my own money because I ain't sponsored, am I? <laughs> so I have to spend 100 quid out my own money. Um, that's probably why I'm doing it so low. And <laughs> I don't need a 300 quid challenge. <laughs> I have to keep all the gear. And I wouldn't go and spend a grand on gear. Like, even so, if someone said to me now, go and spend 100 quid, like your money on equipment, I couldn't do it. I couldn't afford to go and spend 100 quid. Have you seen the way I'm dressed, man? Look, I've got rips in these trousers. Um, I, I'm, you know, I'm a state. <laughs> Because I'm fishing, I don't care. My body's got all in it. I've actually got the body over to stop the wind. Um, I get my mic, but I can't afford a mic. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Sorry, I'm not pleading poverty here. I'm just saying this is the reality of normal people. Um, like, you have to save up for things bit by bit, isn't it? You know? Um, like, all my tackles, bit by bit, bit by bit. And uh, I'll show you a little bit, but I've got a six pound cheapy alarm there that I have to dry out, otherwise, it will break. <laughs> right? And we have one, Sir Billy Fox Micrum. And that thing is old as anything, and it's an amazing little alarm. It's, it never dies when the batteries last about six months in it. And I paid about, I think I paid a tenner for it years ago. You know, it's an amazing little alarm. I lost the other one, so I had to buy a six pound cheapie. Both the reels were given to me, the Rogue Spirit reels. They're actually really good, loaded with 15 pound line. Um, but most of my rods are Shimano's. I bought uh, two Shimano bait running reels for 50 quid, what were banging. Um, and I got a little aero Shimano reel, bought off my mate, I think, for 20 quid. He gave me a little reel as well, a little Shimano reel. Um, yeah, Shimano little reels, cheap, really good little reels. I don't know how you could even make people moan about a Shimano reel. Little Shimano reels are awesome. And you can send them to the Shimano and they'll fix them for you, man. So if they get all rusted and all weird, just send them back to Shimano. It costs you 40 quid and they'll refix them for you. So that's a good thing about Shimano reels. Um, yeah, and you can pick them up really cheap now, like... Um, and obviously everyone's into like big pits and that, but I don't fish anywhere for even needing big pits. So that's ridiculous. So yeah, it's normal bait runners for me, uh, nice and cheap. So yeah, I might do the 100 quid challenge. We'll see. You know, if people go like, nah, you just copy and have a channel. I'm not, it's not really my thing, if you know what I mean. But I wouldn't mind doing it just purely just to show you how ridiculous that was with 900 pound. Like, I, I, you know, to even, if, I don't know, if somehow they challenge me, they're like, yeah, you do it with 900 quid. I can get 900 quid. I got 900 quid. I've got no money. <laughs> I'm broke. <laughs> so uh, I'll do 100 quid, but I probably have to save up. So it's going to probably take me about four weeks anyway. So don't expect the video soon um, because I'm going to have to teach the boxing. I've got the boxing coming up and that will pay me good money for that. So, well, not good money. To normal people to be like, what? I get punched in the head every night for like hardly anything. Um, but at the end of it, it'd be worth it because I could go, go and do that challenge for 100 quid. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't be able to do it straight away because obviously, like I just said, I, I can't afford it. <laughs> but I will do it. Um, if I say I'm going to do something, I'll do it, as, as, as you notice on my channel. Like when I said I'd like catch a car wild carp, I caught one. Now I've got to catch a tench, so that's the only thing I ain't stuck to on my channel um, is catching a tench. I caught loads of good roach and everything. Um, have a look at some of my roach fishing videos if you like roach fishing. Um, I've got some good roach out of little rivers and stuff. I'll be roach fishing this as well. Um, when I actually see some roach, I've barely seen any. I know they're in it because I've caught them a couple of years ago now. Um, but obviously, the cormorants. Uh, bloody everything in there so against me anyway I'm rabbiting on again
Um, but anyway, um, yeah, the challenge, the challenge. If you want me to do it, just comment to say, yeah, I'll do it. And uh, I'll spend 100 quid out my own money and uh, I'll buy a rubbish rod. Well, not even a rubbish rod. Like, if my rod there, that one was given to me. <laughs> if you know so much stuff is given to me, it's ridiculous. Because those people feel sorry for me because I'm, I'm terrible. I was even worse position than I am now, but I was in a terrible position. I, I couldn't afford gear and that. So people just give me rods and that, all their old equipment. Um, that rod was in someone's garage for ages. And Fair Play gave me it, so I was like, happy days. Uh, there's two and three quarter Tesco rod, strong, nice rod. Soft as anything now, though, because I've got so many fish on it. The rod bends like on anything. Um, that rod is terrible. <laughs> it's about... Tenner, I think, about a tenner. Uh, the Connect one, well, I've retired. I didn't want to use it anymore. It was, it, uh, that is a bad rod, <laughs> very stiff. Um, the only decent rod I've got is my um, feeder rod. Um, I broke the throat tip on it, so I've only got the feeder rod on it. And that cost me 60 quid. Dial, uh, Black Widow Dial. I do like it, it's a banging rod. I like long rods, it's 13 footer. Um, so there we go. Anyway, chatting about my rubbish gear. Um, well, it isn't that rubbish, really, to be fair with you. All my reels are good reels, I, in my opinion. You know, Shimano's are good reels. I'm not, I, I don't even, I couldn't even name you big brands of reels because I wouldn't even know. If I walk past someone with really expensive reels, I wouldn't even know because, you know, I'm um, once, um, my mate had a reel and we wanted to check out how much it was worth. And we see, oh, I never knew reels went for so much money. It's like, it reels, it reels. As long as it's not going, <laughs> you're all right, you know. I've got loads of spare reels, like, and they all cost me like a fiver or a tenner. I was terrible. I used to always go and um, cash generator. And uh, there's loads of reels in there. And half the guys don't even know what it's worth. So you can get some really good stuff in there because they ain't got a clue what they're looking at. So, um, yeah, cash gen or any like where they, you know, uh, buy and sell and swap. You know what it's like. Carp anglers get broke. They, they put in their bivvies, their rods and everything. They take crap for it. Rubbish money. Um, so, yeah, trust me. Go and check them out. Right. 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 Well, um, people ask me, well, ask me uh, one question about like sharpening hooks and stuff. And it's like, why would I sharpen hooks? What are they doing in Japan? That's the whole point of the internet, eh? They sharpen the hooks for you, so when you buy them, that they're you're gonna be better than a Japanese. Like, there's, you know, the reason why the Japanese make them, don't you? It's because they're amazing with like steel work and all that kind of stuff. Samurai, in it, <laughs> you know. Um, that's why I have all the hooks are made in Japan. If you go on eBay and look at all the other hooks, every, virtually every single hook's from Japan. You're not gonna see a hook from Russia. Well, I could be wrong. I'll probably get someone to get this hook company. But generally, they're all from bloody um, Japan, aren't they? And um, so, like, as long as they're prickly sharp out the packet, then there's no need to sharpen it. I get it if you've got a sharpener and if you find one was blunt, you sharpen it, or you have a couple of fish to think about sharpening it then. But to buy a pack of hooks and me sharpen it, what's the bloody point? You know, it's so weird. I, don't, I didn't get that one. That is a weird one. Um, I've seen that a lot at the moment. People going on about sharpening hooks and that. Make sure, you know, of anything, I think you could damage the integrity of the hook eventually. If you sharpen it too much, you, what's the whole point why they built them? They've done it that way. You know, like Corder or whatever company have, have done it. It's for that reason. So, they, you know, it's as strong as it can be and it's as sharp as it can be what they can create. Some guy in his shed doing that a couple of times. I don't think it's going to make much of a difference, you know? It's just a weird, bit weird, I thought. Um, about hooks, I don't even buy like, prickly sharp, bam, happy days. You know, you got a chance to let him whack it into his mouth. Well, you know, I know some people are really funny with hooks and that, but that's one thing I do not get funny with is hooks. Um, long, uh, you know, I, how many fish have you seen me drop? I think I dropped two out of like, I don't know how many carp I've caught on this video, out of all my videos. And then people go, yeah, but you might be getting spat out. I probably am getting spat out, but I don't think a sharp hook's gonna make any difference. They're not even getting pricked by it, it's just out. So yeah, I think it's a bit of a weird one, sharpening hooks. Um, I, you know, I get the why people do it, but I won't get it why you do it on every single hook you've got out of a packet. When some, you know, they've done it all in Japan for you. <laughs> That's the whole point, isn't it? Why you just buy blunt hooks and sharpen them yourself? There's loads of blunt hooks you can buy on eBay. <laughs> just sharpen them yourself if you're that concerned. It's a bit weird. You know, they took them ages to do them and curate them. Um, you know, probably, I don't know, 20 years of creating proper carp hooks. And it's like some guy in a shed's gonna do that. <laughs> it's like weird. Oh, there we go, it's a random one for you, but I'm sure I'm sharpening hooks. All right, bye-bye. There you go over there, I forgot, didn't I? Um, like and subscribe to my channel, um, thumbs up, and uh, if you troll, obviously, thumbs down. <laughs> um, yeah, and if you want to get me on um, Instagram, I'm fighting fishing num fighting fisherman number nine. Right, ciao for now, guys. Boom.